Hey everybody, I'm Dave H., the creator of Jambones. Jambones is the open source CPaaS for service providers. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a scalable Jambones cluster on AWS using AMIs and CloudFormation. Now, up till now, one of the more common ways people have deployed Jambones has been with an AWS Marketplace CloudFormation script that we have a link to from our website, and it's great. It spins you up a single instance, an all-in-one system, with everything on it, and it's great for development and testing, and it's also great for running small production loads. But if you've got a large production system, then you need something that really scales, and that's what we're going to get into here. So let's start by taking a look at the end state. What are we going to build in this session? Okay, here's a rather rudimentary diagram that I put together to show what we're going to create. We've got a VPC that we're going to create on AWS in the region of your choice. It's going to have both a public subnet and a private subnet. In the public subnet, we're going to have, obviously, our public-facing components. That's our session border controller, both the SIP and the RTP, and our web server. And in the private subnet inside, we'll have the feature server component and a monitoring server. We're going to use Aurora Serverless Database for MySQL, and we're going to use AWS's Elastic Cache Redis as, Redis as well. Taking a little closer look at what's involved in the public subnet, you can see we've got two SBC SIP components. So these are EC2 instances that will be handling the SIP signaling and facing the outside world. They're in an auto scale group, so that can scale up. We could have started with one instance in that auto scale group. I put two because if this is a production system, you're probably going to want to advertise two IPs to the outside world. So let's start with two. Next, we've got a, the RTP media proxy is also in an auto scale group. I've only got one because we really only need one to start with, and this really can scale up dynamically. It turns out with the, with the SBC SIP, you probably don't want that scaling up and down over the course of a day because you don't want new IP addresses to sort of come onto the scene that you've got to publish to your carriers. So you're probably going to want a small number of SIP servers to maybe three, maybe four if you've got a ton of traffic, because these things are pretty efficient. And you want that to be fairly static so you can publish those IPs to the outside world. However, when it comes to the RTP, you don't have that concern, so we're going to put it in an auto scale group and we can go in and we can let that dynamically scale up and down based on load or time of day or what have you. Next to that, similarly, we have a web server. Again, it's in an auto scale group. We really only need one of them, probably only going to need one of them. But no reason not to put it in an auto scale group. It gives you the flexibility in the future if you did need to scale up the API processing. That's what you would do. Then on the inside in our private subnet, again, we're going to start with a single feature server. The feature server is really the workhorse of the system. That probably will want to scale up and down. So we're going to put that in an auto scale group as well. And then we've got a monitoring server. A big part of uh, Jambones is observability and giving you a lot of insight into what's happening so you can service your customers with, with world-class support. Okay, so that's what we're going to build. How are we going to do it? Well, let's get started. Okay, everything we're going to need here is in a GitHub repo under the Jambones organization. And if you go there, you'll find a repo called Jambones Infrastructure. And this has got everything that we need. You might have noticed in that diagram before, there were five different components. There was the SPC SIP server, the SPC RTP server, the feature server, the monitoring server, and the web server. We're going to build five AMIs, one for each of those components, and we're going to use Packer to do it. So if you go into this uh, repo, if you clone this to your desktop and then look at uh, the Packer subdirectory, you'll actually see some notes here on how to build a scalable Jambones cluster. And the first thing you're going to do is build five AMIs in the region of your choice. Now here I've checked out the project to my folder and I'm looking at it in VS Code. And under the Packer directory I can see I've got these Packer templates to build the five components that, I, that are mentioned that I need. Let's just take a look at one of them. If we look at the Packer template, you can see there are some variables, one of which is the region. So it defaults to US East 1. Good possibility you want to change that. The rest of the stuff you'll probably leave the same. 
there may be a release, an updated Jambones or Dractio release you want to update to, but for the most part, you're probably good. So let's switch here. Here I am in the Jambones infrastructure directory. Let me change to the Packer subdirectory. Let me just go into the one I was looking at, monitoring. And then to build it, it's a simple matter of starting it with the region, specifying the variables that I want to override. Here I'm going to override the region, and it's going to go off and it's going to build that AMI for me. Now I've already built five AMIs, so I'm going to skip past that part, but that'll be your first test. Build the five AMIs in the region that you want for each of the five components. Now once you've built the AMIs, you'll be able to see them in your AWS portal. Here I've built my five AMIs in Ireland, the EU West 1, because that's where I want to deploy my cluster, and I can see them there and I can see the AMI IDs. I'm going to need that. The next step is to put those AMI IDs into the CloudFormation script we're going to run. So back here in my project, there's a CloudFormation folder, and in there, a document called Jambone Scalable Production.yaml. Right at the top, there's a mapping section, and this is the part you're going to want to change. I've got it set to AWS region, uh, I'm sorry, EU West 1, and I've got the specific AMI IDs that I've built. When you've completed that first step, you're going to have your own AMI IDs under your uh, AWS account, and you're going to want to substitute them in here, and you're going to put the region as well that you, you want to use. That's the only change you really need to make to that file. At that point, you're ready to run the AMI, or the CloudFormation script, rather, and actually create your cluster. So let's do it. You want to go into CloudFormation in the region that you've chosen and click on Create Stack. And you want to click to upload a template file. And you want to find that file that you just checked out to your laptop where you had made the change. <laughs> Then click Next. You can give it a stack name. Now we've got input parameters. Most of these we can leave at the defaults. Some of them are the CIDR that you want to restrict access to, to the HTTP portals. I'm going to allow that from anywhere. Same with RTP and SIP. I'm going to allow it in from anywhere. Same with SMPP. SSH you can lock down if you want to. I'm going to allow it from anywhere. Now, as I mentioned, we're using Aurora Serverless Database, and you can specify the max capacity for the database in terms of units, CPUs, and the min. Um, this is not particularly a database-intensive application, Jambones, that is. So it shouldn't need a big honking database to do this. Similarly, you've got your elastic cache node size, and again, you can choose that based on the uh, load that you're planning to put on the system. Uh, encryption secret can be modified if you like. And then you're going to pick the sizes for the instance type. And again, there are five types. I've got them all defaulted here to T2 small, um, but there's a lot of different choices you might select from. Uh, the, really the best if you're doing large-scale systems are the C5N systems. That's what AWS uh, recommends for VoIP traffic. But let's leave them as small for right now. And you're going to need a key. This will be the SSA. You would have had to generate a key pair. You need to generate a key pair, and then you'll see your available key pairs and pick that. That's how you're going to SSH into the systems if you need to. I've got a MySQL, an initial MySQL password and user. There's a prefix you can use in case you're spinning up multiple clusters in the same uh, region. And finally, you've got some. We're going to assign some network uh, subnets to the public and the private sub, the public subnets. And then finally, this one's important, the URL portal. Um, you want to put in here a DNS name for a DNS domain that you control that you will use to access the Jambones portal. So for me, I'm just going to say ie.jambones.org is going to be the URL that I'm going to use to reach uh, the Jambones portal for this. And when we run this cloud formation, it's actually going to create some subdomains off of that as well to reach uh, Grafana, Homer, and Jaeger. Those will all be subdomains off that. You'll see what I mean in a second. So having selected that, I can go on to the next page. There's not much to do here. Confirm, and then run it. Just confirm that I acknowledge I'm going to create some IAM resources. Click to create the stack. And off it goes. Now this will take three or four minutes. So. 
be patient on this part of it. All right, so after a few minutes, it's complete. Let's take a look at what we've got. Let's go to the EC2 dashboard. You can see, first of all, we've got six instances that have been created. I've got two SIP servers that I've created, as I mentioned before. One web server, one RTP server, one feature server, one monitoring server. I've got some, um, oops, I've got some Elastic IPs that were allocated to the SIP servers and the web servers because those I'm going to publish to the outside world or create DNS records for. And I've got some auto-scaling groups that were created as well. So I've got an auto-scaling group for the web server, one for the RTP server, one for the SIP servers, one for the feature server. And again, many of these right now are set to a desired capacity of one, but these are things you can edit at this point in time in terms of turning on automatic scaling, setting the max higher, what have you. Those are your choices to make. Now I've got a full cluster running, but the first thing I need to do is create that DNS record that I'm going to use to access the portal. So let's go back, look at the Elastic IPs, and let's just take this IP address for the web server. Let's go over to uh, your DNS provider. I'm just using Vercel here. My DNS name that I chose was ie.jambones.org, so I put that in here with the IP address and I add it. Uh, that's not all I want to add. I want to add three others as well. One for Grafana, so grafana.ie, again, a subdomain off that name that you created. Same IP, web server IP. Homer has a subdomain off of that root domain that I created. And finally, uh, Jaeger. Okay, so I've created four DNS records, including one for the portal. All right, we've got a cluster. Let's verify it's working. Let's log into the portal. Okay, we've got our basic stock account. We've got an account, we've got a couple of test applications. We don't have any carriers, we don't have any speech, we don't have a phone number. So I'm gonna go through and add all that stuff in. I'm gonna use Twilio as the SIP trunking provider, so I'll add as Twilio SIP trunk. I'm gonna take the IP addresses um, from the SIP servers and plug them into the Twilio side uh, so we can make calls. I've done all this before on various other videos, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit so we don't take too much of your time. Okay, that's the carrier SIP trunk added. Let's add our speech credential so we can do some text to speech. Okay, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and make a test call and make sure that our fresh new system is working. Hi there, and welcome to Jambones. Jambones is the CPaaS designed with the needs of communication service providers in mind. This is an example of simple text-to-speech, but there is so much more you can do. Try us out. Okay, 
You didn't see that, but I was dialing the number that I assigned from our Twilio SIP trunk, and everything is working properly. Now, let's take a look at some of the other portals that are also provisioned. We mentioned Grafana ie.jambones.org so let's log in there that's up and running and you can see we've got a nice little dashboard here to start with with our call counts our response codes there's only been one call and it was a 200 okay, so everything's looking green, but that'd be a pie chart. It'd be easy to see your reject response codes there. Number of calls on the system. Things like the Google text-to-speech time, we can see it took about, that one call took 606 milliseconds. We keep track of the cache hits for the text-to-speech because we cache the audio. The webhook response times, we can see what did it, it took about 200 milliseconds to hit my application webhook. And then we've got um, system metrics on the feature servers, load average, free memory, the SBC SIP servers, and the RTP servers, all broken out and automatically shown there for you, as well as a breakdown by process. So it's a nice dashboard that lets you see at a glance how your big honking cluster is running, how many calls you're taking, what trends, uh, trend lines look like, and so forth. Uh, we've also got as we mentioned, homer.ie.jambones.org, so you can log into Homer. Uh, which I'm not gonna do anymore right now, but it, Homer is there with SIP traces. And then finally, just added recently, Jaeger. Jaeger's pretty cool because this gives you application tracing at a call level. So if I go back and I look at this recent call and I expand it, I come down here, I'm going to see a trace ID. I can now take that trace ID and put it into Jaeger. And look at this, I can get some pretty cool application level oops, tracing. So I can see the incoming call. Try to make this a little bigger for you. And then I've got different open telemetry spans for various things. So I can see there was an account details database lookup that took 35 milliseconds, another database lookup that took 8 milliseconds. I then performed the app webhook, as we saw that was about 240 milliseconds. Did a text-to-speech, you can see the text-to-speech generation. And you know there are tags here so we can go and for any of these spans we can see more detailed. I can see for instance this call used text-to-speech from Google, it used WaveNet C, language was EN, yes, it wasn't found in cache so we had to generate it. All that sort of thing is, is, uh, is there and available with a lot of additional data. We can see, for instance, the call was hung up by Jambones. So Jaeger is a pretty nice, and open telemetry and Jaeger are pretty nice new, new ads uh, to the feature set. So this gives you a lot of observability into the platform at the individual call level, SIP traces, or metrics at the system level to see how things are performing. So there you go. That's how easy it is to spin up a scalable Jambones cluster on AWS. As always, have any questions, reach out to me at DaveH at Jambones.org. Find me on my Slack channel. Thanks, and have a great day.